and rejoice in the joy of the harvest. When you go with the Spirit of God and you step out in sharing, it doesn't matter if it's in Africa or it's here, it's in Pathmark, ShopRite, it doesn't matter. When you share, there is always, the Spirit will always honor it. If they, if they reject it, praise God. Jesus said, dance, leap for joy because you're blessed. If they accept it, leap for joy because you're blessed. Either way, it will never be dull and you'll be blessed guaranteed. So he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Now we saw in the Greek, the word, you know, the word for, for a few can also mean puny. So you got this comparison between the greatness of the, of the potential, the greatness all around us. I mean, all around this building, go out, go out, go out, keep going. Everything's a harvest in your life. Everything's a harvest around you. And it's either, it's either believers or it's a harvest. And so it's comparing the puniness and greatness. But you can take it another way. If those who are puny, you can say, well, I'm puny, we're puny, what are we? I'm just not, what am I? But if I step out, God will make me great in him. You'll become great in him. When you go forth in the great purposes, greatness comes on your life. You know, you know, you know so many testimonies are, you know, are, hey, I, I'm not that kind of person. I don't do that, and they, I, but I did it anyway. And God made me that person. You know, we were so many people in the Bible. Were, look at most of the people who are called, where we see their calling. They're scared, most of them. It's no. Lord, I'm too, too this, I'm too that, I'm too this, puny. I'm too this, I'm too puny in my speech. I'm too puny in my righteousness. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm too, I'm too puny, I'm too young, I'm too that. I can't do it. And God says, don't, that's not what it's about. You go, I'll be with you, I'll do it. That's all you need to know. You know? You see, you know, if you want to, you don't live a great life because you were born that way or it just happens to come. You become great by God's greatness in you and choosing the path of the great over the path of, of puniness. The actions of the great, especially when they go against your nature, especially that's where God is going to do it. That's when something, cha a change is going to happen. Where, you know, Messiah said, all authority is given to you. All authority. Where is that all authority? How many believers are living in that? Where is that? Well, the secret is the authority of God rests only in the will of God. In the will of God comes the authority of God. In the will of God is the favor of God. As much as there are things in your life that are outside the will of God, get them out. And as much as there are things that are not in your life that need to be, get it in. Because that's where the blessings, the favor, and the authority of God are. The Great Commission is the center of his will. And so when you step out in that Great Commission comes the authority of God, the favor of God. I can't tell you how many stories, how many things I could, I, there are that I've experienced when, when going out in the Great Commission, going out, even going out in missions, the powerful moving of God. It's like, you know, we, we grew up hearing about the Superman story that back home on his planet, he's a regular guy, but when he gets to Earth, he becomes super. And of course, that's just a myth. But it happens in the Great Commission. When you go forth in the Great Commission, it's like you become super. There's some, because there's an anointing. You know, there's an anointing. I remember one lady in the congregation, quiet, very quiet, quietest, meekest lady, you put her in Russia, she becomes this superhero. We stop at a traffic light. She tells the bus driver, said, stop right now. I have to go out and witness. I'm like, witness at a traffic light? Then they were saying, we're saying, hey, you know, there's not much. There's like 40, 45 seconds. They said, that's 45 seconds people can get saved. I said, whoa. She says, you're holy. She goes out and she spreads the gospel. And I've seen, it with, I've seen it with all of them. I, at one point, we're in the middle of a street, and we just, we just, there's a bus of children. We had children's Bibles. We just stopped the bus. We never do that here. Certainly not in New Jersey. <laughs> but there, we just felt it. We just had this, this, anoy this anointing. I'm not saying you can't. You can do it in New Jersey. You might get run over, but you can do it. <laughs> but you do things that you never would do. I cannot tell you, and things happen that would not happen. It's like you get these power, you know. I remember in Cuba, I cannot tell you in Cuba how many people came up to us and said they had dreams about us coming before we came. I mean, place after place. 
one woman followed us all around the island because God told her, just be, like, I don't know if it was before we came, that we were coming and she had to find us. And finally she found us on the very last spot when we were just about leaving that church. I remember before we, we went to Cuba, before that, before that opened up, a pastor shows up from Cuba the week before who had been imprisoned for his faith, and he prophesies, and he says, you're going to enter king's palaces. You're going to, he gives his whole thing, and it all came true. Just as the Spirit came upon the disciples, when you step out in the gospel, the Spirit will rest upon you. The Spirit in Hebrew is the, what is it? Ruach, wind, wind. The life of the Spirit and the wind, the wind will be at your back. Whenever you do things, there's an anointing there. I remember we were going to Central America on a mission, and before I go, someone writes on a piece of paper and says, this is the theme of, your, of the trip coming, and she writes down, a mighty wind. And I remember at the end, we we're there in San Lorenzo in Honduras, and I'm in a square with thousands of people, and I'm sounding the shofar at the end, and I'm speaking about the power of God, and I blow it, and this mighty wind comes on everybody. I mean, over the whole place, so much so, it's blowing into the sound system, and the sound is being amplified for everybody. If this was the gathering, I think I told you once, where there were witches came to stop, to, to apparently, to stop what was happening. And they ended up whirling around in circles like a tornado was, was whirling them, and until they went down on the floor. When you step out in God's will, your life will never be done.